welcome back. That's BM. What is this? <laughs> what? Production is now trolling me. Ahmed, I don't think they have any chance to beat us. Um, Mad Lions lost the game, so I I needed something What's to that? help better. It's a world's tibbers, and I just I need this because I'm getting scared. No, 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 no. That's not fair. That's not fair. Production, can well, I have we, one too? We lost. Like, yeah. What is this? So production flame me. They give me a bear. They tell me it's super special. No one else is gonna have one. And then you just get one in the wings. I don't have one. Of course. Nonsense. I, I, have my, I, have my, I have my LeBlanc. Actually, though. Uh, such I'm, a I'm weeb. Good. Such a weeb. I am. Now, Chronicler, as I cut you off, what do you make of side selection? Are we getting a zoom in? <laughs> Full confidence, I am. Chronicler, what do you make of side selection now? Uh, Mad Lions, had, they lost the game. Got to select side, so they're blue. Um, final thoughts, and then let's move on to one of the players. Yeah, there have been some uh, statements made by uh, LCK teams that I'm not going to name about how good Blue Side is. I subscribe to that view. I think Blue Side's incredible, and it should really help uh, kind of deal with some of the issues that Matt run, uh, run into. Most specifically, uh, I think their matchups on the top half of the map. Now, of course, let's talk about those two players in particular, Armut and Impact. Game number one, uh, Gnarmut's Gnar was banned away, and he played the Rumble. But I want to look at these statistics in terms of their uh, performances here at the play-in stage. I mean, when you look at your kill participation, obviously with the way Mad Lions play the game, slightly higher KP. You look at your damage share, that is a dramatic difference. And then the one that really hurts. Five solo kills to one. Chronicle, what do you make of the two players' um, you know, performances? And we will see Armored's champion pool in a moment, as well as what this man needs to do to step up against the top die master. Uh, I think it's very in line with what we expected coming into this series. Impact is just a player with such an incredible, long-storied history. And even as far as he is into his career, I, I, as I mentioned at the top of the day, he can always turn it on. And I think that Armored, I just don't know if he can match those highs that Impact is able to show. Yeah, and I think... It was a good surprise to see the Rumble here. Uh, he has played, yeah, five picks to the NAR pretty consistently, so I think it is a good ban. Uh, and he's here. He's always been the X Factor for Mad Lions, and I want to see what he's able to do without that NAR pick. Um, but a little bit of a better draft. I'm expecting Aatrox for him, and I want to see because yeah. he is a good Aatrox player. Agreed. Especially during his playoff. Uh, <laughs> should say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regular season run. Regular season <laughs> yeah, run. Yeah, there That's we go. Good That's a good Especially one. Especially during the regular season run, I feel Ooh. like he's been an exceptional Aatrox. So. I mean, look at how much he's talking and chatting. He's one of the more vocal members yes. of the team. Before we head over to the casters for draft, I do also want to mention that it must be interesting for Armour being in this position because, what, two years, three years ago, when he was playing for Supermassive, yes. he was on the other side of the rift winning those games against Mad Lions. Now, all of a sudden, he's the one against Mad Lions creation. Now he's, a, you know, with them, down 0-1. But this is a team that doesn't necessarily tilt in these scenarios. I do believe in oh. their, their mentality. You're right. They have a really good track record in best of fives. Thanks for... It's, it's, <laughs> thanks for okay. But I will, I, will, I will support your point because you, you, you kind of stole my point there. I really enjoyed this that one. This is teamwork. <laughs> this is teamwork. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, so, yes. Armut didn't share that experience, yeah. but players like Kaiser, I always love hearing from his interviews and just how he actually ends up playing games. He is extremely stable in how he ends up wanting to play out uh, usual map rotations in the late game. So I think one loss, not a problem. I just want to see them kind of make those uh, adaptations, adaptations yeah. now. I agree, and I still have, even after that game, which was, I think, was an incredibly hard game to play for Oyoya, looking what he's playing into, yeah. even there, he found really good creative angles. Yeah. He was still able to create a lot of uh, a lot of moments that could have tilted the game in Matt Lyon's favor. So if they get a better draft, and he can still have that same level of performance, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it even up one-to-one. -one. Yeah, and more specifically, I think the, the, the Vi pick, kind of talking about the first um, I'm, draft. I'm, I'm slowly becoming... Uh, more in line with your view on Vi. It's about time. There we go. We're, <laughs> we're slowly changing him, and I like that. You're converting into the anti-Vi. Also, he's team. making us nice, which is strange. That's too. great. Rubbing I'm really right. proud We've of had you so guys. much fun banter back it's and wonderful. forth. We're going to change that by the end of the day. We will. That is the plan. Now, one, one next thought here is uh, Mad Lions. How well do they adapt? Evil Geniuses, they started the series off strong. Can they keep that momentum going in game two? Or Mad Lions claw or bite or eat their way back in? Let's head over to, uh, I'd like to order a small caster to pick up the call. Over to you, Patreon time. Gee, thanks, Trevor. <laughs> Love that for me. <laughs> We're back. Hell yeah. Oh, boy. You guys missed an incredible pre-chat lobby where uh, Evil Geniuses was asking Mad Lions, hey, what's the delay? Because Mad was clearly on stage talking a lot. Uh, and El Yoya said, not much, just flaming my top laner. Worst rumble I've ever seen. 
Uh, then you had Armut firing back saying, my jungler's a rat. <laughs> and then uh, again, Oyoya came back and said, I wish I had Odo as my top. <laughs> and Evil Geniuses was just flaming them the entire time, mixing in their own banter. I tell you what though, this jungler from this side of Matt Lyons does not play Maokai. Not a single person of Matt Lyons have played Maokai yet. And even with blue side available to them, it will be the first Ooh, champion wow. that they're actually banning themselves. So. Matt, uh, Mark was joking. He said, yeah, but surely you can play Maokai. But I mean, so far, Matt Lyons not willing to at least. I'm really curious to see if they go for the NAR ban here. When you heard the analyst test talking about it, I was not surprised to see uh, that ban first pick Aatrox. With the Aatrox ban, will you double ban Armut? Because Impact does not play a lot of the meta hard counters into NAR. And so we'll have to see what he wants to go for here. He's much more the type to play an even scaling matchup into it, uh, or just something that can play weak side and, and kind of go even. Yeah, and seeing that Hecarim was left open, Matt Lyons, they would have first picked that immediately had they been given the chance. It does leave Silas open for them. And Laning first was fairly close in the first game. Niski almost had a solo kill on Jojo, and it forced Inspire to delay his jungle clear to hover around the mid lane instead. One of the other minor things in that pre-chat banter was uh, Jojo Hyun insulting Niski's Silas. Of course. So maybe mind controlled him into picking it again. We'll have to see, but with Naokai Van, looks like Sejuani is the pick here for Inspired. Also of note, Cluster is open. She's been pretty heavily banned throughout the tournament so far. We know it's something Kaori certainly can play, likes to play from time to time, but we'll see how things shake out. Looks like things are very similar to our game one so far. Yeah, the problem with Callista is that despite how underwhelming the Draven was in the first game, you, you don't really want to blind pick it into it. Um, but I think EG are super happy with just playing the Victor into the Silos matchup once again, while laning phase was a bit shaky from where it started. Jojo in the late game was completely untouched and dealt out so much damage. That seems random. That That's a... Pastry and I both just arched our eyebrows at each other, like, what are we missing here? Because I agree, you want the victor probably again in that matchup. You can take it as the final pick, and I thought that they would then use this one to take something away from Mad Lions. I was like, maybe you just blind Lenar yourself. Maybe you go for a strong support that you think they might want or something. Set does not feel like a takeaway. It feels like most likely a flex pick that can go between Vulcan and Impact and trying to not show their hand too much. Uh, but that does leave up a very happy El Yoya to take Trundle away, which was banned, I believe, in the previous game. And here, now having two tanks already locked in for EG. It was banned in the second ban rotation, so this time around, they want to go with it immediately. You already know you're playing into the Sejuani, so you're getting value off your ultimate. This is why I, I was curious. Were they going to go with the Draven once again, or would they want to default to Misfortune? What Draven allows you to do is that you can late invade and you'll pretty much win it no matter what. You have Trundle who's one of the best brawlers in the early game and you actually have the Draven too. Now with the Yumi being locked in, this pretty much just confirms that the set is going into a solo lane and I don't want to outrule the possibility that set can be played by Jojo in the mid lane against the Silas. Jojo Pion has been limit testing all worlds long in Champions Q and whatnot. We're not be surprised if he has some other pocket picks available. Though uh, I'm very happy to see the higher priority for Mad Lions for El Yoya's pick, not getting it banned out in the second phase of bans. He is so important for this team, and he did play uh, a good Vi game. It was just not a good Vi angle, honestly, for the draft that EG was able to take into it here. A more generally strong pick, as well as having the strong matchup into Sejuani, gives El Yoya the opportunity to take this game over, hopefully. Yeah, and now coming in with the bans, they want to ban away the Draven, super, or not the Estral, super potent into the Draven in its own right, but also having a Yumi on top of that is super easy. Normally, Siva would be a problem. This time around, you're not going to ban Siva, just due to the fact that Alistar will probably come out as a counter pick into the Siva. You can't play that lane as Siva when you're playing up against the Draven at the same time, so it's probably just going to be another ban coming through. Yeah, Siva already already counterpicked by the Draven in a sense, so don't want to spend another ban on it. You want to get rid of the uninteractive 2v2s. Maybe that means they get rid of the Varus again, but I don't think Varus Yumi is quite the same level of potency. Nila gotten rid of. So Nina does function really well together with the Yumi, but still interesting of a champion. She does neutralize it. And seeing Siva be locked in, you slam, you just slam this Alistar right now. You can't spell shield the combo. You're playing into the Draven. This is bold from the EG bot lane. Kind of laying it down, saying, Unforgiven and Kaiser, you were not impressive in your Draven game before. We are not scared of it. It's basically a call out saying, we don't think you have what it takes to actually snowball through bot lane. But you're playing into Trundle as well with the pillar. This. I am, I'm not sold on it. I'll be happy to be proven wrong, but I'm scared a little bit for the EG bot lane, seeing three picks like that into no, it. I, I'm with you. This is, this is a sweaty, I am, I am worried. 
Very nervy looking at this draft right now as an EG fan for Mad Lions. Looking good so far. The only question now is, what are they going to round it out on the top side? Yes, thank It you. is all reliable. Orin coming in blind for Armut. And I think it just makes sense, right? He, nice band away. You don't want to see the rumble again. We saw the Orn in yesterday's series. Long range engage. You can play the weak side. You're not going to be attacked. You can just kind of chill up towards that top side. Play fully towards this bot side. If Aluria doesn't have to get a single pressure gang on the top side, Aluria is happy to just be on the bot side. It is side. JoJo set. It is JoJo set into the Silas. Not too much of a surprise given when we saw the rando set. What felt like the draft pick we had seen was the Silas. Makes sense that it is the counter pick there. We'll have to see how this one goes. We talked a, a bit yesterday about how Silas is not actually that strong of a laner, especially into melee matchups. You often take him into matchups where you can scale against range champions who can't pressure you hard enough to actually pull you in the short mid lane. If you go melee versus melee, sometimes he can actually get scrapped out pretty hard. But this is not enough AP damage. Yumi's going to be in Ludens for sure, and she's going to max Q. But you have Set, Sivir, and Gangplank. So Joanny does give some magic damage, but Bro. it's certainly not what you're looking to be the highlight. Who needs magic damage when you have true damage? JoJo's going to land every Haymaker pile <laughs> by fire. There you go. Nice. Absolutely enough true damage to burn through. Three tanks! <laughs> Setting it up, I believe. No, uh, this this is very much a, a scary draft for EG, both in terms of how the comps interact, like you're talking about, the immense amount of dive with only one uh, very big backline threat in the Sivir. If you can get on top of her and blow her up, there's not that much damage, as well as the fact that, like you said, it's very physical damage heavy. All three lanes, physical damage oriented, does mean it feels like EG are kind of in a want to snowball, but none of your picks really want to do that, except mid lane, probably. So expect a lot of uh, ganks early from Inspired. You do have double melee solo laner, so you can get that kind of combo going. But GP is really not what you associate with Sejuani early chain ganks with melee. Yeah, it's almost like uh, kind of the older, earlier patch, different roster EG, right? Weak side bottom lane that scales well, and then a pretty proactive top side. How that plays out in this game on this stage, we'll have to find out, because they're right into it. Round two between Mad Lions and EG. EG looking to see if they can start a sweep. They've already done the impossible, winning a game versus EU this year. See how many more they can get as Mad want to even things up. Starting aggressive on the bot side, seeing if Kaiser's going to be around here. And still, move up towards the tri bush, but Unforgiven will most likely just spot it. Yep, there you have it. Oh. Set E, maybe gonna get in range. Raven W, heal comes through. Nice usage of summoners there by Vulcan. Gets the flash out of Unforgiven. Again, the Draven losing his flash at level one. This time not in the lane phase, but it means, again, it's gonna be hard for the Draven to fully exert the laning dominance that the champion can provide if you can't have the safety of a flash up. And while it's a small thing, that means the Draven is not gonna be in the lane to auto attack immediately at the first one uh, on the minion wave and get that pressure. So it'll actually be easier for Kaori to Vulcan to dictate at least the first few waves now. The one nice thing for uh, Mad Lions is they already know EG's game plan. Uh, Jojo Pune <laughs> in all chat, we said it was very quiet and respectful game one. We'd see if that would stick. After one win under his belt, Jojo Pune's feeling himself. Says, can't mid, guys. I'm telling you, he needs it. Level three gank or he's in Wait, trouble, we can't we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess trying to make that known right now, Niski winning the first part of the trade, but set passive pretty good. And something Jojo has to be worried about is the fact that Niski actually hit a ward level one, which means that he'll get level two on the first wave in the mid lane. So if he's trying to trade too hard when they trade even in terms of killing the minions, Niski will actually win that due to a level advantage. Thumbs up from Jojo. Keeping the wave in a good spot. Once you get the Cerner, hits level two as well. Got a kill on a creep, I believe. So very nice trading from Jojo. Yeah, so the good thing for Jojo was that he had the push, he killed more minions. So despite the XP advantage being on Niski, it did not matter in this instance. Jojo going to want to shove this wave in, get the wave further away from the turret to keep pressure up onto Niski. Mad Lions bot lane with Kaiser wrapping around, having pressure. Hold up here, early gank topside. Love this look out of Elioia. Impact in trouble. Going to have to find the fat flash or maybe just not going to use it. No, it does get it, but Elioia chases. Pillar is there. Q is good. That's going to be first blood again for Elioia. Great pathing to begin the entire series with here, or second series of the game here. Now inspired, though, down towards the bot side where Unforgiven does not have to flash, but the Mad Lions bot lane, they're not getting too aggressive yet, but Kari goes forward. Ghosts on in, wants to try and make the play, is going to get the flash out of Kaiser this time, Ignite down as well, inspired here, but they can't find the follow-up. Good defense by Mad Lions. All right, Mad Lions make their play up in the top side. Very nice clear by El Yoya going buff to buff to gank, a very awkward timing window for impact. You could see caught him unaware that that was coming. EG felt forced to make something else happen in the bot side. Yeah, you get to get 
Kaiser's Flash, which again is stemming that aggression. But right now, what you're really worried about is this snowball on the top side. El Yoya looking for the repeat gank, and there's no defense coming. Two dives actually happening, so we're gonna start in top lane. Bottom lane, you can see there's the TP in from Jojo. Impact in a little bit of trouble, but does defend long enough. Now Jojo's in, that's gonna force the flash out of armor. Bottom lane, looks like it's not going the right way either for EG. So two different dives, but no kills. So they burned the teleporter, these are there from Jojo, but still messy gang as well. You get the flash out, it was good tower juggling. Armor's so close, but he's taking more damage. I think that still is a net positive for Mad Lines, if I'm gonna say. You got to absorb some of the resources from EG in the bot side and the top lane, relieving that pressure from Niski able to use his teleport for lane now greedily if he wants to and kind of control Jojo Pune a little bit more. What's really interesting to me with at least the Matt Lion strategy so far is the fact that they decided to play up towards the top side. And when they did that, that allowed um, Inspired and the rest of EG to stabilize this Draven lane once more down towards the bottom side. And even then, Inspired is doing a good job of being in towards the enemy red side, clearing away some of the camps, getting an experience lead. I do believe it took away the Crocs too. Now he's in a position to gank the mid lane. Fascinating mid 1v1, but Inspired gonna make it very uneven. Flash Q is gonna get the knockup. Niski almost stunned. Should follow through. There's the damage. Inspired gets one back. A little bit later than Jojo called out, it's level four and level five that the gank comes in, but they do find the kill on mid lane. Niski losing his flash does cost Jojo's, but we'll see if they can keep chain ganking mid now. There is a level advantage for Inspired as well. Yeah, great job from Inspired to strike back in the matchup here between the two junglers. And Yoya started up on the top side, Inspired down towards the butt. Finding the gank in the mid lane before Yoya is done with the wolves, meaning that they can just turn on Niski immediately. And this does bring to us to our Mercedes-Benz featured matchup between the two junglers. As we'll get a replay first, here is that gank on the mid lane. Inspired's gonna come in and turn this one around. Jojo has the setup, forces Niski up into the lane, which I think is what honestly makes them want to go for this play, just getting too aggressive with his trades here. It's the fact that he knows that Yoya is on the wolf, so he thinks that it's gonna be easy for him to come around. What he's not anticipating is the fact that Inspired has been clearing the Raptors. So it's just his mismatching timing that Inspired wins out on. Where I was going to go with that uh, jungle point was that it felt like El Yoya and Inspire kind of took over the scene, came and rose to prominence in EU around the same time, becoming the next up-and-comers of the jungle class. You know, you have old man Yankos still holding it down, but this was kind of the fresh generation. And I think uh, for Evil Geniuses, being able to get Inspire on their team has been huge for them this year. Probably the entire reason that they have had this insane run that they've had out of nowhere the MVP of the LCS in summer. Yeah, shout out to the RLs and shout out to Inspired finding another gang as well, trying to push in that top side instead of Armored. He's not going to overcommit with the dash in this time around. Yeah, the expectation back on the jungle is definitely that they would control the pace of this game. El Goya obviously a bit more aggressive, a bit more carry oriented, but very flexible for both of them. Inspired's been a great shepherd, a great babysitter in some cases of young Jojo Pion. But so far, so good as both junglers find early success. But El Yoya lining it up here on Takaru. Jojo's roaming in, though. Yeah, has Vulcan attached to him as the Yumi. Still don't think he wants to take that 2v2. I mean, it could have been good for EG if the dive had actually happened. Now the dive comes around, Ooh, but they don't have a good delayed look. But actually, El Yoya taking too much damage. Level 5, Jojo's still here. El Yoya does not have flash. Barely not back up, and Kauri just picks up a freebie. Yeah, and it just feels like so good movement coming through from EG. They know Matt Lyons wants to go for a dive. They have their members arrive. They have the cannon barrage ready too. And for Mad Lions, that is just a pure overextension. You forced that dive too heavily. I feel like we just caster cursed them. The fact that the GP6 comes in, clearly not communicated, but also El Yoya so far ahead of Kaiser. Look, he's tanking the turret before Kaiser is in combo range. They're trying to get that play before the Vulcan can get back under turret, but there's just no way that that's ever gonna work. Probably even without the GP ultimate, even if you do get the kill there, you'd still be stuck under turret with Jojo collapsing. So definitely feels like Mad Lions felt the pressure a little bit on wanting to make that play work. Can't spell shield, like Kuburg said in draft. Does get stunned. Oh, the trample coming in hot. Gonna force the flash there after the ignite, but he's inspired. And that's how it's supposed to go. It'd be nice if a pillar was around too. So I feel like just Mad Lions, it goes back to a problem I've had with them for a long time. Playing through that bot lane has really not been one of their strengths. And you see it here. I think EG even punishing it. EG has been doing such a good job to have better movement down here. You can even see it now, despite Matt having the push, inspired is around. He does have level six. So if overextensions come through, they can just commit to turn. I guess Ignite as well does have a spell book from the jungle, so swapped over for a bit of extra power in the potential gank, but nothing happening there. Yeah, Mad Lions back off the wave at the right time. No flash, no six for Yumi as well. If they might have had another way to set that gank up, then you can have Inspired charging in, but just too safely played by Mad Lions. Gold lead even. 
at the end of the day from all this aggression. So they're not in trouble yet. They should have strong scaling with Armut's masterwork items as well as the more balanced team comp like we were saying. Drift Tower is also starter built by El Yoya, so that should be some extra gold going over to Mad Lions, even if they just dump it for a couple of plates. Things going well in general, though, across the Rift. Again, another even somewhat slower early game here is a lot of tactical trades, I feel like. Again, these junglers really leading these teams in different ways. It's not surprising to me that the first two kills were split between them. But lane has rotated into the mid lane, and let's see what they can actually make of this. Suplex available for both of them. Yep, Niski now trying to go back in, but it's by a tin nails! Niski with the ulti, and that W is going to find its mark. Just too quick of a play by EG. <laughs> Niski stole the ultimate Wanta, suplex him back into his team, but JoJo just grabbed him first and threw him further up the lane, just gets exploded. JoJo Pew 1-0, got the emote spam going, flexing on set. And we talked about the mental advantage. Inspired hitting a fat XD in chat as well after that play too. <laughs> oh no. So uh, definitely on the rift, things are going really well for EG and even between the bander of the two teams. I gotta say as well, Vulcan's gotten out of lane a surprising amount of time for a Yumi in a Draven Alistar matchup where you're supposed to be babysitting Sivir. I think this speaks again to the trouble Mad Lions bot lane has had. He wasn't needed there necessarily. The play had already gone in their favor, but that was going to end up being a three for three if it was a more extended sequence and so EG have done a pretty good job of answering all this early bot side aggression yeah it just feels like aggression is coming through from Matt Lyons EG has to respond to it and even now as well Matt Lyons have an aggressive tool with the Rift Herald I'm looking at EG to see how are you going to respond to it again because the clear strategy would be to go for the bot lane it would to be get the Draven ahead get some plating on him but you can also see it from the movement around the map and the way the camps are lining up for Inspired he is pathing down towards the bot side I'm not here as well. Niski still has the ulti he hijacked earlier. Jojo, though, kind of baiting him here, doing <laughs> oh sit-ups in the middle of the lane. I will say, for how well the Victor went for Jojo last game, love to see flexibility from the youngin on this set. Looking really nice in this counter pick. Happy to give Silas of all champions away to Europe. Inspired, able to smite that blue buff away. Set obviously not needing it, giving a little bit of extra gold and experience over to his jungler. One of the nice advantages of resourceless mid laners. He has to be careful though. He's feeling himself, he's flexing a lot, but EG still have a lot of work to do to come out ahead in this game. We talk about the scaling, the Rift Herald coming through. Draven still has his stack, so while they have not been able to convert yet, there is still that ticking time bomb portion of the Draven kit. It does not need to go instantly in your favor. Now Drake has been spotted up. Inspired does have the ultimate if they want to turn Jojo's around, and Matt Lines might get pinned. Oh, the suplex looking for Unforgiven. He had to flash forward, but Jojo still in the mix, getting a little bit low, though, but another great face breaker. Gets his way out of there. Volky gets the kill. Heals up the set. Niski caught completely unawares. And EG as Jojo dives in, finds a beautiful team fight. And that is just a dragon gifted right over to evil genius. Matt Lyons, they start up the objective in EG. They just pincer them down. Niski gets over aggressive. Jojo starts it all up with a great suplex. And Vulcan onto Yumi keeps them all stabilized. Inspire doesn't even land the initial ultimate onto Unforgiven, who is pincer between the bot lane and the jungle mid combination. He has a nice flash to avoid getting the suplex damage. He kites it out, but that has left the. Uh Kaiser alone to be focused down, and then Niski greeds out for the kill, but Seth at low HP is his comfort zone. The shield, the healing that can come in, keeps him alive, as well as Vulcan switching over to heal him up. Nicely done, as also Kauri continuing to be the bearer of a lot of good news as far as gold goes. We said it. Looked very tricky to pick Sivir into the known Draven, also with Yumi, their very weak bottom lane, but he's reaped all the benefits. 2-0-1, Kraken Slayer already done. The only mythic on the other side is the Frostfire Gauntlet there for Armut. So gold heading in the right direction once again for EG. Up 2,000. Looking good though. Jojo Pune, the hope of NA, the young Zoomer. He was heralded as one of the best talents North America had ever seen this year. There's a controversy about who EG should select for their mid laner. People have been debating it quite a bit, and uh, they went with the young gun in Jojo Pion. He's backing it up, showing it was the right choice thus far on the world stage. Oh, that's inspired. That's so cute. It's the spellbook TP. He's had it's the it's 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 actually <laughs> incredible. The question Vulcan. is, can they get the Herald? They, they do, can. and actually they're going to keep going. Vulcan finds the first ulti off the book, and now Inspired finds the follow-up, but the damage isn't quite there. Kaori needs to get in range, but the Qs are going to keep on coming. Mad Lions, get away there. That is the most proactive jungler I have ever seen in my life, and that's a Juani right there. <laughs> Moving up towards the top side, you need to stabilize, but I'm right down there. Inspired having a massive performance in this game as well on the Sejuani of all champions. He has secretly been an incredible tank player for the side of EG. 
in their playoff run had, I believe it was a nine kill Sejuani game, soloing out late game 80 carries at six items. Huge fan of the Anathemus chains, which allows him to lock down targets and then solo them out himself with Sejuani's percent HP damage. Well, now Jojo is hitting the plate. He's going to get it. Does Alt Niski going now the other way because he has to run out from the situation he just finds himself in. He's literally dueling Niski between two towers. Oh, ultimate does not connect, but the big thing for Jojo here, actually, that he's denying Niski so much CCs by doing this. Jojo picks up a play by himself. Jojo's the one who pushed in the wave, and Niski's spending his time not last hitting minions, but trying to kill Jojo unsuccessfully. And I have to call out the man who might have given EG the dark tech about set. Bwipo, in the regular season, had a game against Impact, where he dumpstered the topside matchup. I believe it was like six kills at the first 10 minutes, turning 1v2s, 1v3s. EG might have taken a note during that game and said, hey, pretty good into melee matchups. Might save this one for a dark day. Against Mad Lions at Worlds, that's a dark day, I guess. I mean, I'm feeling it like it's a dark day at the moment, but... <laughs> Maybe for you, I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> do not worry about it. We do enjoy the good League of Legends, and we do enjoy seeing how EG has actually piloted this so far, especially with the players who's been under so much flag. Even Vulcan on Enchanters have been good this game. His movement on the map has been super solid, and Kari has been a position under so much. Well, can you play Caitlyn? Can you be the carry we need? Can you be the Danny-style AD carry we're looking for? Well, he's playing a scaling AD carry right now. And that's the thing I was going to say, especially in the last game with EG finding so many different flanks, I feel like the, they've read Mad Lions so well. Whether that's vision or just good intuition and good map play, it doesn't feel like Mad are necessarily doing that much wrong, but every time they go for something, Inspired especially is always in the right place as we have this Herald fight. See if Mad Lions want to contest. Turn on to Armut. Buffers out. Still has to flash, and Vulcan now going to follow up again. So much CC on this team, and the tanky one's not going to live. On the other side, though, Jojo single-handedly keeping them away from the objective. Four lions standing, and just one boxer in the middle of it all, scaring them all away. Love, love that play from EG. Love the call <laughs> of the boxer as well. Hey, yo, uh, that was, uh, I was about to say, it's not a back-breaking situation yet for Mad Lions. We talk about what's the goal deficit that you're okay piloting this comp from. I would say, you know, 2 to 3k at 15 is around the breaking point. They haven't had, I would say, the back-breaking play quite yet. Still all turrets available for Mad Lions. They haven't lost one, but losing that, losing the Rift Herald, right when they were moving up to contestment, that they committed the resources so they couldn't take the bot lane turret with Unforgiven or something during that time. I'll break the back of those Lions then. You have a Rift Herald available for Inspired. You have control in terms of dictating the rotations currently as well. You're just one push away towards the bot lane right now where you get open the first turret, then the next one. Drake spawning in 10 seconds so this is a, is a beneficial fight for EG as well. Matt Lions are going to be losing a lot so this is crucial for Matt Lions. You cannot back down now. It's going to be tricky. GP already down to the bottom side. Kai's going to start off. That's a beautiful pole run. Finds him and Jojo finds I think three off the stun and oh my goodness Kaiser just explodes to the face breaker inspired dashes away. Jojo though is finally fell but here comes the impact. Big barrel combo attempted with the flash aggressively in but it does not connect to Matt Lions. Might have got away with it but Siva with the That's Yumi knockout out. is going in but there's the shutdown. Niski turns it around with Armut there but impact is still going. They have extra carries unforgiven. Forced to flush away is the Sejuani prison. Snipes out unforgiven. And Alyoya and Kaiser are the only two left. And Alyoya, not long for this world. EG get the delayed ace at the dragon fight. Mad Lions kicked that one off. Had an okay angle, but it was on the two beefy members of EG. They could survive that initial burst. And even though it wasn't the cleanest fight, EG still walk away. Here, there's just so much tankiness for both Jojo and Inspired already this portion of the game. You also get this fat haymaker with just 500 true damage. Like I was saying, half ironically, there is a lot of true damage to deal with the beefiness. Here is the angle where I think it's over, but GP, he, I see what Impact wants. He wants the flash triple barrel chain to not get the third barrel out there, and that led to that awkward situation. No ulti, 1v2 Jojo took out the tower, looking for Kaiser. There's the W, does a lot of damage, but now Niski's in there, finds the showstopper, but Jojo's ulti is cooling back off. He's just so menacing, and Niski's gonna find it! Jojo cannot get out of that one! But it took two members to teleport play as well to make that work. I think the heads up play is the fact that EG was not on the map yet. Had Inspired been on the bot side, when you send four members top, you would have lost so much on the bottom side against the Rift Hell. So, Matt Lines, they make one play happen. 
but this is still EG's rift right now. Yeah, five and a half thousand gold lead in EG's pocket. Nice play by Mad Lions. It's going to take a lot more of plays like that to be able to turn this game around. The fact that they have not gotten the Draven popping off quite yet, still got shut down in that last fight. You're going to have to do it the hard way now. Side lane pickoffs, making plays like that happen. And EG just been so on point from all fronts is this game. Like quite often, between both teams really, we only highlight a couple players when they have the victories and then there's another member who might have been a bit sloppy or something like that. But in this game from EG, they've all just been performing. I think it goes back as well to the side of Mad Lions. They've really struggled playing through their bot side. This time around, they had all the tombs they needed for success, but they've not found it. Big Kaiser. Kaiser. Flank. Yeah, this is not a bad angle, but now they're going to spot him. Jojo on the front line, but again, relatively tanky. Pumps the W. Shield is off now. Armor with a decent ulti, but that's a great zoning ultimate out of Orkanon. Ironically, is Kaiser now going to be caught out of position in the EG. They find the pick in the pincer. Not enough gas in the tank for Matt Lyons, and EG, they just split apart that fight so cleanly. You can see it just Kari and Vulcan channeling the the entire Matt Lyons away with the lost chapter, and the rest of them are just, well, beating up the poor cow who tried to go on a flank. Yeah, at this point, the front-to-back team fight for Mad Lions is not an angle they want to take. There's just so much damage in the front line of EG that they're willing to scrap this out. Karma versus Jojo Punin inspired. You can see that he's forced back. When the rest of the team tries to channel through this flank, that's when Kaiser wants the angle, but they just turn onto him, combo him down, while, like you said, Kauri and Vulcan keep the rest of uh, Mad Lions away with the GP ult as well. Their coaching staff feeling good about that counter pick that they were willing to break out here in game two. Jojo getting a little aggressive, luckily. He lays around. EG in a position where they can play on two lanes, but Baron still not. Yeah, gotta get out. That's what I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> Arma just channels the TP, knows what's up. Was getting wrapped around there by the rest of EG, who have taken over this rift. Almost 7,000 gold ahead, and that number is not slowing down anytime soon. Kaiser, oh, no ultimate. I don't know if it would have mattered, but yeah, no ulti, definitely <laughs> dead. I mean, the cap close pick potential for this EG team. The speed ups from Yumi, Sivir didn't even need to pop her ult there, but again, they could have had that option. Inspires long range snipes with a Q alt combo. What's so big as well about this is that you took away all the wards. You can only use pink wards to get aggressive now from the side of Matt Lyons, and that means EG, they can just get aggressive on the Baron. Impact still has to teleport, so he can get aggressive on the bot side. Coming TP in. Up. And now, Matt Lyons, they have to forfeit the bot wave. They can only move into this Baron. We'll see how they want to do this one. Jojo Pun has ult and can always just rip El Yoya away from the Baron for an uncontested smite. Mad Lions will probably have to take the fight if they want to stop this. Jojo trying to intercept Armut, I think. No, he's going to get stunned up instead. He's still got the Yumi attached, but Jojo is just so strong. The front line will not be stopped, but actually a snipe on the other side onto Kauri, who's trying to play 1v2, but Impact, the ever the team fight is peeled for him, and Jojo has done the dive with the rest of the squad. Still alive, and that wallet is starting to feel a touch too heavy for Mad Lions. That's a great knocker, but that's a double kill for Impact. Delayed ace, Kaiser came back alive during that Not fight. Again. But EG are smurfing this game. 17 to four in kills, 10,000 gold up, a 21 minute Baron about to go in their favor, looking to go up 2-0 in the series. EG, they're just playing this so clean. And I wish, I really wish I could give some credit to Mass Lines in this game, but I can't. EG has fully outmaneuvered them. EG has fully had their number in every single part of the lane. And it comes down to the point where it's a five versus four. They're looking to just get some team fight going for them. But EG immediately turn off the Baron and start hunting down members of Matt Lyons. A 761 true damage haymaker to the face of El Yoya forces him out of the fight right away. It means that there's no one helping Niski on the backside of the fight. He was 2v1 there trying his hardest, but everyone else was getting destroyed by the Bash brothers of Jojo Pune and Inspired. They ran the regular season of North America. They had some struggles in the postseason, but these two guys still on form. Nice thumbs up there for Jojo. Knows the game is going well. As predicted, the banter floodgates opened after game one, and I'm sure they'll be back after this one. This Red Bull Baron power play might not be that big, but that's because EG are so far ahead at this point that there's not many steps left in this game. No, they're grabbing the dragon. They're giving the turret bounty over to Niski in a second here, but they're going to be trying to break the mid uh, bot inhibitor during that time. I got to say, EG getting the better. You talk about having the game plan downloaded for Mad Lions. I'd also say even in draft, the red side counterpick of Rumble did almost nothing in that first game into Impact. 
This time, EG showing the power of a properly utilized counter pick in the mid lane, shutting Niski's first pick, Silas, down. Even going forward in the series now, it's a question of, do you have to start banning set? Can we no longer first pick Silas? This has been a huge wrench in the game plan. No, I, I still really believe that Matt Lion's trap was one that was easy to play in the early game, so even more credit to evil geniuses who completely shut it down, find their own way back into the game. And despite the damage profile being so mixed, yes, you still are not so mixed. Yes, you still have the true damage from set. It just does not matter in the game when EG is so far ahead of the curve and they're just completely stomping them. Luton Jimmy is doing work, by the way. Vulcan has been sniping Unforgiven for the last minute or so. They gotta go. Deed. Yeah, Niski got two towers. Has to come back, though, again. They're literally just tanking two Nexus Towers, EG! You can't be doing this on the world stage, your opponents. The Yumi does go down as Unforgiven gets one back, but the Bash Bros are back in form as Armut will be slain. And everyone else still left alive as EG look to end this game. 3v4 defense. Vulcan did die in that. No one to keep people healed up. Jojo Q. <laughs> Gets helped by Kaiser as well, alive. in it terms of pushing matter. the Haymaker forward. Unforgiven is going to try and find his way out, but Kauri now going to put the finishing touches of EG's game. 2-0 now up on the Lions. Welcome to Evil Genius's Rift. Currently score 2-0, and oh, led by NA. Not won a single series against EU since 2019, but EG, they're looking to make it a fast one today. There had not even been a game by a North American team versus a European team in best of five at Worlds or MSI. Now EG are on the verge of their very own sweep. Only one more game to go. We'll see if I cast your cursed it. <laughs> continue, continue. Keep <laughs> they look unstoppable. <laughs> There's no way Mad Lions find a way back into this series. It's been fun. I mean, thinking about the set Silas interaction as well, because the other thing is like, oh, maybe you just give it up. Silas is very powerful. He's been banned a lot. Jojo also plays it. He first so, picked it as well yeah. in one of his games. So if Niski doesn't have a similar answer, Jojo's like, sure, I'll yoink that champion. It's still oh, pretty good. For sure. In terms of reads on the players, right, I, I think that EG has been doing a phenomenal job, even knowing what they can first pick as well and not respecting, expecting an answer into it. I think the Atrish was one of them. I think Maokai is one of the power picks as well that EG have in their arsenal. My, uh, Mad Lions doesn't play these champions. Well, they do play the Aatrox, but they'll have it banned against them all the time. So it's so difficult for them. We've seen them on the red side. We've seen them on the blue side. And every time, it's just been EG that comes ahead once you hit the rift. Yeah, especially the uh, Draven pick, which Unforgiven has used twice now. Neither time finding a foothold in the lane phase makes it feel like this is one of those times where for Mad Lions coaching staff, you kind of crumple up the game plan. It was a nice one. Didn't work out now. You've tried it twice. You need to just totally switch your play style and find something else to work in the bot lane. 100%. So we're not quite there yet, so I have to ask, given that uh, EG are on the precipice of potentially sweeping this series, I hope we have more games to go. You know what, maybe we'll ask them ourselves. I wonder who the best live vlogger is, because Trevor might be coming up as EG have taken a commanding 2-0 lead in this series. So let's send it back over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Nope. Nope. Don't like this, don't like this, don't like this. I have two emotional support tippers with me. And if you didn't quite catch that joke that uh, Pastry Time was setting up, if Mad Lions lose the series, I will be carrying that atrociously ugly bird all it's the way to New bird. York. The last time Mad was in play-ins, they got shit on by Turkey. I'm the best Turkish player. That's a tweet from Kaori. That is one of the stakes at hand here. And I do have a lot to talk about as we are going to move on. Evil geniuses are 2-0 up over the Mad Lions. We're going to start by looking at this draft. And Chronicle, I'm going to come to you first because I'm asked in the first game, do you think Mad Lions are trying to play around the bottom lane? Could that be a thing? And it hasn't worked. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad Raz uh, yep. got a little bit of support. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, these Draven picks are just not working out when the... Yumi and Sivir lane not only gets out unscathed, but actually is able to pick up a lead. Um, surely with jungle attention and, and mid also going the way uh, of, uh, of EG. But like even then, I think it's a toughie. Yeah, definitely yeah. the case. Is your mic working there, Raz? Got it working now. We're Got good. it working now. So, yeah, um, looking at the draft, I think the struggle usually it, it does start with mid jungle. Um, because early picking Silas has been really the focus of the series. I think Evil Genius has understood that. Um, and it actually ended up turning into a quadruple melee composition. So GP was fantastic. Yeah. The set, especially in lane and the skirmishes around it, was amazing. Yeah. And so you really can't capitalize off of the Draven lane as the game goes on. 
just of how much control EG ends up getting through the mid lane. I absolutely loved how the Shoutcast has set it up as well. Basically daring this bottom lane. We don't think you can carry. We're going to lock the Sivir into yep. it. And it didn't. I have some stats to highlight this for you as well. Kiori versus Unforgiven. 11-3-18 for Kiori, 5-6-3. Look at the kill participation, the gold difference, the CSD and the K+. Plus. Every single category against a Draven, Kaori's coming in on top. And that's why I'd argue just pick up an MF, pick something that you can just leave alone that will always have value no matter the game state because trying to play through this bot side, uh, as, as you already pointed out, I think Niski right now is not being able to actually match Jojo whatsoever. Uh, and then everything falls down, as we have talked about a lot, to Elioia, and he's really trying, but yeah. by himself, there's just too much fires to put out on the map. Talking about falling down, how about a suplex showstopper? Because Jojo Pion set an every second counts record, thanks to the Reliable Sister Network. And Raz, look at this play, and frankly, Yumi just makes me um, happy for Evil Genius. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Um, yes. One thing you didn't end up seeing there, or maybe it was in the peripheral, was the flash from Unforgiven. He needed to get out of that one uh, right from the get-go. And so what ended up happening was, because of that, Alistar is just outright open, right for the picking, really well done from the set to be able to just segment that fight and make it easier for Evil Geniuses. And it's the combination of Yumi plus, I think, Jojo having a really good angle. Uh, <laughs> nice footwear. Nice. nice footwear. I love it. Uh, the, combined the, with there the needs to be a second well. hat. Sorry, there needs to be a second hat because they're 2 0 up, right? So we need to have something to indicate scoreline in these Eagles. Please continue, Crying Club. No, I mean, I'd, if you want to talk about Jojo's hat, well, you know, after game, how, about, how, about, how about you talk about one more Jojo replay before we end the segment and get ready for, for pregame on game three? That sounds good because Jojo to me was uh, the focal point of this specific match. And this is. Initially, it looks like maybe it's okay because you're, you're fighting um, a man up, but the core issue is you're throwing everything into two tanks. And then the tanks, well, one of them eventually goes down. Uh, Inspire doesn't, and even though the execution on the subsequent fighter of yeah. the is a little, could be better. Um, that could have backfired, but because so many cooldowns have already been blown trying to take down Inspired and JoJo, it just ends up going the way of EG anyway. Yeah, 100%. Just hard forcing in that choke versus a set who just destroyed the Alistar instantly. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was not an easy fight. So. My word, look Crazy. at that. 24 and a half minutes. 24 minutes, 10 seconds is the win. After 10 minutes of laning, it just blows up. I'm going to get one last comment from each of you as we go to an ad break, and we come back for what is match point, series point, for the first time in history. Yeah. Evil Geniuses is the team picking up wins against EU at BO5s at Worlds. It's, uh, there's too many fires, I think. We need to see a complete pivot here from Matt Lyons because if you get a scaling draft like EG did, uh, did there and you snowball that hard, it's not a good sign. You wanted a, an indicator on that hat yep. of JoJo? Yep. Feel like it's already there. First game, Joe. Second game, JoJo. By the end of this next one. Joe, Joe, Joe. Boom. That's how it goes. It's match point for Evil Geniuses. Will they make history in 3-0 the Mad Lions? It certainly feels that way. We'll find it after the break. Kind of reminds me of Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. Yeah, I prefer um, Star Platinum. And, uh...